With that, let's get up to Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Sports coverage of the NFL finds us at Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. Just a moment ago, the lights, the cameras, the action, all the pyrotechnics, everything was ablaze, everything was allowed here in Bank of America Stadium as Carolina emerged from their tunnel. And we are ready to go as the Panthers get set to match up with the Philadelphia Eagles. And hello again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon here in the booth. And, Chuck, you take a look at this matchup. I don't know if it's going to be one in the trenches from the quarterbacks out, whatever. It's going to be a good game. Oh, without a doubt. I can't wait to see the big fellas have an impact. We're always spotlighting those wide receivers and quarterbacks and running backs and even the defensive backs. But the big guys, I can't wait to see which one tilts the balance for their team. Here's the kicker, Jake Elliott, ready to get this one started. And off we go from uptown Charlotte. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Carolina and Cam Newton coming off that big win against New England. Here they come to take the field. And for Cam, two touchdown passes, Charles, the first three games. A lot of speculation. Cam's not right, playing hurt, etc. But he bounced back in a big way. But we talked about it during the preseason, didn't we? Cam had shoulder surgery in the offseason. Wasn't working. Full practices, right? Full sessions in preparation for the year. Played very little during the preseason, so Rust was going to be a part of it. Looks like he shook it off in a big way at New England. 316 yards passing, three touchdowns, ran one in. Looked like the Cam of 2015 when he was the NFL MVP. Now a first carry for Jonathan Stewart. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And what about this offense, Charles? Specifically, what about Jonathan Stewart? He makes sure everything goes. Put the ball in his chest and watch him run. Can run with power inside, but has enough speed that when he gets outside, he can cause a lot of trouble. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They keep it on the ground again to Stewart. Yeah, he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. By the way, partner, that was a 30-year-old running back carrying the ball. Yeah, <laughs> turned 30 back in March, did Stewart. Yeah, I know that people say that you're not supposed to at the age of 30, but Jonathan Stewart, good style, good physicality. He'll continue to run it. Hoping to keep him healthy. Hasn't played a full 16 games since 2011. An early test. Two plays in. This is third and two. From the gun, here's Newton. And the tight end, Dixon, left side. And a great effort there to shed the contact, and it helps him pick up the first. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Just the first quarter of a tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and wearing all offseason about a season open opponent, and they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I had missed him, it would have been a long story. night. They go play action here on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. It's a gain of seven, and it'll make it second down. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. Three yards to go on second down. Ready, ready, ready. 
Newton turns and hands to Stewart. They'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. And the defense now for the Eagles. In 2016, the Eagles showed that they were going to be aggressive on defense. A lot of man coverage and send the pass rushers after the quarterback. I don't expect that to change at all in 2017, but they are looking for an increased play from their cornerbacks trying to lock down some wide receivers. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. They go play action with Stewart. Now Newton. Open man is Stewart. It's complete. He needed a yard. That's what he got. And it's going to earn him a new set of downs. So when you saw him dump it off to the back, did you think he was going to pick up the first down there? Well, well, I knew one thing. It wasn't his primary target. At least it didn't look like it. Turned out to be the play they needed, though. And it's big because it's the opening drive. So converting that third down, keeping the play, not the play, the drive going. Yeah, it certainly appeared like his downfield targets were covered. He threw a little dump off to, the, to his back. And nice effort picking up the first down, though. And you're right. That opening drive, keep those chains moving. Now Stewart on first down. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. And a solid run down inside the 30. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. Now this will be play number eight of the opening drive. It's third and short. Now it's Newton. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. 17 yards on the pick up there and also a first down. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. The confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sidelines thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. The toss play, Stewart. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. I like the call. Inside the red zone, running the toss. Why? They want to get to the edges. They want to see if guys who don't normally make a lot of tackles are willing to actually do that. That usually means the guy's in the cornerback position. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. Offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Still second down. And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. To throw on second down is Newton. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. It's a gain of nine yards. And they're going to have a third down. I'm not sure that this play was designed for him specifically, but they got through the progressions and got the ball to him. So second catch on the drive. He may not be a primary guy, but they definitely want him involved, don't they? Uh, absolutely. This early, the opening drive, as you said, two catches. So if they can get him going in the passing game, 
That should open up his running game, too. From the gun on third down, Newton. And he's got it. Touchdown, Panthers. Devin Funches from eight yards out. And the Panthers take it right down and score on the opening drive. And a great example there of just getting the feet in in a tough spot. It seems like every year these guys get better at this. Well, I think the drills get better that they work on, training camp, off-season work, OTAs. But also, a lot of these guys have dance backgrounds, ballet backgrounds, and they take that and carry it over to the football field. And there's going to be a stoppage here. The booth wants to take another look at this potential touchdown. Graham Gano on for the extra point. And this will be good to give the Panthers a 7 to nothing lead. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And Carolina scores to cap it off. Gano out to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. Leading them is their second-year quarterback, also the number two overall pick a season ago, Carson Wentz. Many wondered if the Eagles gave up way too much to get the number two pick from Cleveland in order to draft Carson Wentz. But after his freshman campaign in the NFL, I think people believe they see positive signs from a big, strong-armed guy, an intelligent guy, and a really competitive player. This one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And it'll bring up a second and 13. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he's able to hold on to the football. Second down, offense behind the sticks here. Second and 13. Play fake to Blunt. Now it's Wentz. Looking for Jeffrey, and it's intercepted. It's the Pro Bowl of Luke Kinkley that picks it. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. Well, this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. Panthers coming out now. And certainly they'll be hoping to hit pay dirt like they did on the last drive. Got the football back, so a chance to go up two scores. And they haven't been tentative at all in this ball game because sometimes you start a game with your script to try and get information out of the opposing defense. How will they play you in certain situations? Sometimes you script to attack, and that's what I'm seeing so far. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Thank <laughs> you. 
Newton gives off to Stewart. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Stewart on first. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Seven yards to go on second down. This is Stewart, and not much to speak of there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Throwing on third down, Newton. Out to the flat, that's complete to his running back. Five yards on the pickup, and that's gonna bring up a fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. So now off goes Newton, and on comes the kicker, Graham Gano. And Gano's kick is right through. And that will make it 10 0 here in the first. So they were able to move the ball into the red zone, but they'll wind up coming away with just three. Yeah, 32 yarder. That's equal to an extra point nowadays. And those are no problem for an NFL kicker. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Start on the ground here with Blunt. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Second down following the run. Wentz now giving to Blunt on the draw. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. 
So under the category of, while it can't be us because we're not that good, but could you imagine if this was you? Like Garrett Blunt, his first 1,000-yard season since, what, 2010, his rookie year, and 18 touchdowns in the regular season, <laughs> and no longer with New England. He is over 30 now. He turned 30 in December. I don't know if that played a factor, but, yeah, such a productive year, and then he's gone. Well, that just tells you this. Now he's going to be playing with a chip on his shoulder trying to prove something. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's got Rome. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Let's take a look now at the Philadelphia offensive starting lineup. For them, the run game so far this season has been a good surprise, hasn't it? It's been a big surprise, but it's been a one that they've needed in a big way to take some of the pressure off of the second-year quarterback, Carson Wentz. You know they lost Darren Sproles to injury earlier, but still, LeGarrette Blunt, who they picked up in the offseason, Wendell Smallwood, and now the undrafted rookie out of Wisconsin, Corey Clement, they hung 214 rushing yards on the Chargers in their win in their last game. Now they'll throw it. Wentz. And the reception made by Alshon Jeffrey. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Another big play by Alshon Jeffrey. I think his best days are ahead of him. I think he's ideally suited to help this young quarterback, Carson Wentz, develop. He had 13 career 100-yard games coming into the season, and you know in the city of brotherly love, they're hoping for more. Yeah, just think about Alshon Jeffrey, the catch radius, and the ability to make plays downfield against smaller defensive backs. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. And they'll go Wentz to Blunt here. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. But you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 10-zip our score. We're back to Uptown Charlotte after this timeout. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two. They've got a second down at five here to start things out. score well partner that was another explosive run and one thing i've learned in our time in this game yes the offensive line has to get a lot of credit but for big runs to occur the wide receivers have to block well downfield and then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too right oh without a doubt you need that difference maker lugging the rock
On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. So this drive spans seven plays, and it ends in a touchdown run by LeGarrette Blunt. Elliott now to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. They start on the ground. This is Stewart on first. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Ten yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. I absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. This is Stewart again. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense, and guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Second down, they run with Stewart. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. On third down, Newton, and he gets it to Funches complete. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. Newton finding Funches for the Panther first down. Stewart and very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. On second down, here's Newton. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Shepard. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. 
but it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. The Panthers on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This will be third and five. A shotgun snap for Newton. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Now a man who subbed in for Andy Lee down the stretch last year, Michael Pilardi, to kick it away. As he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. This one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the spot here. And the side judge says that went out at the seven-yard line. coming out as they get ready. Well, things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? And not great starting field position here for the offense. The drive starts with a handoff to Dorn. Nice move on the play, but he will be brought down shy of the 15. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Again, here's Blunt. Oh, he's got a little daylight. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. going to give this one to Blunt. And he'll power his way up near the 25. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this one up to the 26. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards. And it'll bring up a third and two more. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. 
that's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Here's Bill. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. He lost two there, and it's third down. The previous play was a nice run, so they came back with the draw. I think they were trying to fool the defense into thinking they would throw the ball and wanted to run it again. Unsuccessful, but this team is definitely showing they want to keep it on the ground. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Now flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. All star offense. And that'll set them back five. Still third down. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Wentz now to throw. And an alley to run. <laughs> and he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. Now a play fake here on first down. It's complete. This is Brent Salek. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 11 more yards that go around. A first down as well. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Offensive line wasn't set. There's the flag, and five yards back they go. Quarterback has to look around and make sure that his team is ready to go. Sometimes the quarterbacks go faster than is necessary. And yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. wins he gets it left side to Johnson and he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds that throw good for four it's second down way forward here for a modest gain. A six-yard pickup on the ground that time, and that'll make it third and four coming up. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. This offense has converted two third downs on this drive already. This is third and four. Play action. Now wins. And it's caught by Salek. 
And he goes out of bounds inside the 10 at the 9. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. But normally on a third down play, I'm not a huge proponent of play action. But when you run it as effectively as we've seen them do in this game, yeah, it sets it up pretty well. Yeah, particularly on this drive, they've been great running the ball. Good setup. Now flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. So that'll back him up five. Still first down. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Now a carry for Blunt. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second in goal. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Second down, here's Wentz. And oh, not only did he drop it, he dropped it in the end zone. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him, they've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. The offense on third down, a perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. They're looking at a third and goal here. Now wins. So a minute 56 to play in this first half. And he can't hang on. That would have been a big interception down here in field goal range. But instead, now they'll get a shot at three. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Larry Ridley is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. Now Jake Elliott for the field goal try. And Elliott puts this one through. And that will knot us up at 10. I feel like we just ran a marathon. That was a long drive. They probably wanted six if they're going to go that many plays. And there were no checkpoints, no watering stations, nothing like that, right? Terrific job by the offense because not only did they possess the ball for that long, they wore down the defense. That could pay dividends later. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here are the Panthers now as their offense comes back out onto the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. On first and ten, Newton. It's complete right side to Benjamin. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. 
and you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Here's Newton now on second down. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. The intended target that time was Jonathan Stewart, and it's third and short. Well, partner, so much for the mismatch. How about the guy at the second level, that big linebacker, able to run with the receiver and make a play on the football? The Panthers on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This time it's third and three. Out of the gun, Newton. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And tough starting field position here. Back near the goal line. Here's Wentz. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Once again here on second and ten. Ertz has it left side. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. The Eagles on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and eight. Shotgun now for Wentz. Aguilar has it. Now a loose football. The ball comes out. And it's picked up by the Panthers. And they're already in the red zone. The 18-yard line is where they take over. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. The Panthers offense here, they get ready to head back on the field. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit.
Following the fumble recovery, Newton. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. Second down now after the pass completion. From the gun, here's Newton. He's got it for a Panther touchdown. And Dixon from 10 yards out. And the Panthers have taken the lead. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Gano for the extra point. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. Well, that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them in plus territory. Excellent field position. Two plays later, pay dirt. Gano out to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. All right, time for us now to discuss Alshon Jeffrey. With them losing here in the second quarter and his limited productivity so far, you'd have to think they're going to try to look to him a little bit more, right? I would guess you would start to see maybe some quick screens, some hitches, anything to get the ball in his hands quickly and let him try and do some damage after the catch. Or maybe just flip some formations and keep him isolated where it's more of a one-on-one -on -one route and get the ball to him. I say just four verts, right? Hey, why not? Four <laughs> verts, one of the best routes in football. Hard to cover each guy all the way along the route. So far, just one catch for him. Throwing on first is Wentz. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Second down now after the incompletion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. Final shot before half for Wentz. And he's going to go down. 
Couldn't get a throw off with the pressure. Maybe that was for the best, as that brings us to the end of this first half of play. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Panthers are winning the turnover battle, but this is still a tight game. The Eagles, to their credit, have not allowed those turnovers to define them and have battled through it so far. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Held to the middle of the first. Cam Newton looking for his big receiver, Devin Funches. And he goes in for the TD to cap the drive as they take a 7 0 lead. Eagles have it on second and five. Lunt's got it on the run. He caps off the seven play drive with a score, cutting the deficit to three. Now third and eight. Aguilar is going to make the catch, but fumble here. Now, after the fumble, Dixon's wide open here on the catch, and it's going to be caught for the touchdown. That puts them up by a touchdown. That'll do it from here in Orlando. Let's get you up to North Carolina for the second half with Brandon and Charles. Gents. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep, and they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Out come the Eagles now as he'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors. But overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. They'll begin here with Blunt. Broke a tackle, but not much room there ultimately. Just up past the 25 and no further. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Now blown. And not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. But you know that old expression, it's not my night? It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Now Wentz on third down. And Jeffrey's got it. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Wentz finding his new weapon, Jeffrey, for an eagle first down. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Throwing his wins. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. 
And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. And Eagle first down there, Wentz to Ertz, and the names that end in TZ. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. So here we go, first and 10 now. swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Well, he didn't make headway on that one, but he's had plenty of carries all night long. I just wondered if maybe he's a little bit tired from tilting the rock that much. Ten yards still left on second down. Play fake to Blunt. Now it's Wentz. Caught by the tight end, Ertz. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Call it a gain of 13 yards on the play. And that'll make it third down. It seemed like the situation was second and a mile to go for a first down, which screams what? Throw the football. You got to pass in order to try and pick up that kind of yardage. But in this case, they ran a tendency breaker because the tendency is for defenses to be out there and be set up for a pass. So you break tendency and actually run the football. That changes everything because if you're able to find the crease, you often have bigger guys working against smaller guys downfield. And he's going to go down. Back near midfield at the 49. Look, Carolina had a number of issues last year, and that's why they slumped to 6-10 and 10 after a Super Bowl appearance. The pass rush wasn't a problem for them. They still got to the quarterback. 47 total sacks. That was just one behind Arizona, who led the league. Yeah, I think the biggest issue for them, young corners that gave up a lot of big plays. Here's Donnie Jones now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this punt sails over the sideline, and the spot, it looks to be right at the 25-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Yeah, how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. Looking to get the ground game going with Stewart. And he'll wind up with about six up past the 30 to the 31. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Second down is Newton. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. It yeah, really turned it loose, didn't it? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. 
The Panthers on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and four. Here's Newton. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Carolina. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. A little juke. A pretty good return, all things considered, but holding. I agree with you totally. It's actually a return that they were going to be very proud of, but when you end up holding and bringing it back, now your offense has to start a little bit deeper in their own territory. Wentz now on first down. Smith catches left side. <laughs> Look at the spin. Balance. Torrey Smith, watch him go. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Torrey Smith, 77 yards. And the Eagles are within an extra point of tying this thing up. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Elliott on for the extra point. And he gets it to go, and we're all even. 17 apiece. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass. And that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Carolina getting set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They go play action here on first down. Benjamin with it over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A good pick up there, 26 yards. We often, with Cam Newton, talk a lot about his legs. Don't forget about that arm. He can throw it on a rope, 
He can loft it. He's got the touch that's been developed throughout his career. But the big part about just watching him throw it, it seems almost effortless. On the offense lining up first and ten. Stewart on the counter, looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a just big, a big man, big, a huge man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> Comes to Stewart, and he's brought down. A nice pick up there at 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Oh, he gets lost. You can't find him, and sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guys trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost. But this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. Newton on first down. And he's going to go out of bounds. He takes this one down shy of the 20. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. All right, say it with me now. There are a lot of different words we come up with. Maybe we go back and forth after that play, getting his toes tapped down to make that catch. Crafty. Yep. Wiley. Oh, definitely. All the veteran names. You name it. Has every move in the book and continued to get better throughout his career so he can make that type of a catch. On first down, Newton. Caught on the left side by Benjamin. And he's not even able to get back to the line of scrimmage. And there's also a flag down, and it's in the area of holding. Holding offense. So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that could be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. Cam's going to run the option right. Finding room to the 20. It'll be a gain of 18 on the play, and it'll be second down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it, but it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Newton going to hand it off to McCaffrey. And here he'll get it down to the seven. The six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. The pigskin on the seven-yard line now. It's first and goal. Newton to throw. And he's got it. Touchdown, Panthers.
Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to drop those types of plays because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But if you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough. They couldn't handle it. They worked out for six. And they will take a seven-point lead now. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And the end result, a Panthers touchdown. Gano out to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drives exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It yeah. was real easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. Yeah, we'll see if it's that easy here. Wentz now on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. And fans, a quick reminder from the NFL, after nearly a decade of working together in the fight against breast cancer, this year the NFL and the American Cancer Society, they're broadening the scope of their efforts to tackle multiple types of cancer. And you can learn more about the expanded Crucial Catch initiative and access the Defender, a new digital tool that provides personalized tips on reducing your cancer risk at NFL.com slash Crucial Catch. And I applaud the NFL for broadening its, its scope here because... Cancer affects us all in many different ways, and now everyone will have the ones that they can focus on and be able to support. to about the 46-yard line. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Second and just one. Now Wentz on the bootleg. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time, and it's third and short. Well, they're swinging it, and then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. The Eagles on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. They're up against a third and one situation. Now wins. Caught right side is Jeffrey. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. That's a good chunk of yardage that's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they?
Now a play fake here on first down. Over the middle to Smith. And he is down deep into Carolina territory. And that goes for a gain of 31. Well, that certainly looked like the Torrey Smith we knew in Baltimore. A guy who can just run past defenses, and what do they say? Take the top right off of them. Game-changing speed, and the days in Baltimore good, days in San Fran not so great, but now hoping to get back to his former self. I would say they have an extremely motivated wide receiver in Torrey Smith. So they're operating in the red zone. Going to give this time to the tailback. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game. Got to make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Second down following the run. They'll run it now out of the gun. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's the Eagles behind on the scoreboard, but with the football here as we start the fourth quarter. The Eagles on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and five. From the gun, it's Wentz. And almost intercepted. Would have been a huge pick in the end zone, but as it stands, that brings up Ford. The throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Now Wentz, gotta have this one. And he's gonna be taken down, sacked back around the 18 yard line. K1 short, busting throw to get him for a loss of six. Now Jonathan Stewart getting set to go as he trots back out there. And as the numbers show, he really wasn't in the mix at the beginning, but they've got him in the rotation now, and it's proved a good move. And that's what happens when you're a good player. There's a lot more attention drawn to you, and it's obvious that they had him in their game plan on defense, not letting him get off to a good start, but he's found a way so far here in the second half. Now a first down throw for Newton. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. That would have been a great catch. but was real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. again. Newton. Throw left side is taken in by Stewart. And he'll be taken down just shy of the 40. 
And a nice gain of 21 yards. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. And now first down following that long game. The busy night continuing for Stewart. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. It's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. They'll try the right side with Stewart. Uses the stiff arm. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. He was close to flirting with that sideline, but able to stay in bounds like you know his coach wants him to do and keep that clock moving. Isn't it funny that we're watching this play when we had that discussion just yesterday about this? What do you do in this scenario? What do you, you know, what's your mindset? It appeared to me that he'd totally forgotten that he needed to stay in bounds. And then the last second, oh no, I better, I better get down. And he ended up doing the right thing. But at that point, maybe close to let this slip away. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Carolina. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden, it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Fresh set of downs here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to be stopped at about the 37. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. Four, four, four. 
On second down, here's Wentz. It's caught on the right side at Smith. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. On first down, Wentz. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Star Latulale continuing to fight downfield. The big tackle gets him for a loss of 11. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. Concerned about that last play. You also know that the offense coordinator does not want to see that happen again. They want to get back to doing what they've been doing all game long. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Shotgun now for Wentz. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Here's Donnie Jones now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Carolina getting set to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. and 10. Newton. And Kelvin Benjamin's got it. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Strong left, strong left, strong left. 
They run here with Stewart. <laughs> and he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? First seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. They keep it on the ground again to Stewart. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Well, partner, Marvin, our number one stats guy, just handed me a little card that says he has 97 yards on the ground today. You think he's going to get the ball again? I think so. Three away from that century mark. Got to have it. Yeah, and I think what they're going to call is one of his favorite runs, whatever he feels comfortable with, and what the offensive line has executed well today to try and get him over 100 yards. Now Newton on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. It'll be a two-yard gain, and that'll bring up second down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes that's quite a surprise to guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. So the offense looking at a second and eight. From the 50, Newton. To the sideline, and it's caught, but boy, he's out of bounds. And they try to get him into space, coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. Throwing on third down, Newton. And he finds a man. It's McCaffrey. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down game. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. So the offense has it first and 10. Throwing again is Newton. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Draw play, Newton to Stewart. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football, keep the clock grinding, keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. The Panthers on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This time they face a third and two. They'll try and run it. Here's Stewart. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. From our vantage point, that was just one bad play by the offensive line in a series of really good ones tonight. But I know that they're going to be really ticked off. It's a lot like a baseball pitcher losing a no-hitter late in the game. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. 
This to make it a two-score game. That is inches from the upright. It's no good. Wide to the left, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Now we get a look at Torrey Smith as he comes back out onto the field. They might want to mix something up defensively because he's been shredding them a bit, hasn't he? That he has, and even with all the changes that you know are going on on the defensive side of the ball, he's still finding ways to get open, finding the right spots, and the delivery's been pretty good, too. He's over 100 yards, has the one touchdown score to this point. First is Wentz. Ertz has it left side. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. That one goes for 24 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. Time starting to run out here in the fourth. This defense just trying to keep the offense off the board and preserve this potential victory. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but... I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. So this offense really needs to make something happen here late in the fourth with the football. Wentz going to throw. And this is Ertz with it, right side. And he gets it down to the 32. That throw good for four. It's second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Second down, just one yard to go. Working from the gun, Wentz. Complete, Smith has it. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Thomas Davis in there to take him down. And the clock will roll. He'll look to throw. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Torrey Smith, the intended receiver. And it'll bring up third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline. But do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. 
And we'll check out the call. False start. Offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. The Eagles on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This will be third and a mile. They'll look to throw. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Figuring they're going for it on fourth down. Remember, though, they do have all three timeouts, so even if they don't get it, all is not lost. Yeah, normally in this situation, when you're talking about having to go for it, everything is in this play. But as you noted, with those three timeouts, they actually have a little bit of a safety net. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Mario Addison in there to get him the sixth time. They've sacked him tonight. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down of this game, and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2, if they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. <laughs> the field here come the Panthers they have the lead obviously late in the game I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake a field goal does the opposition no good everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion and that helps you immeasurably but the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game don't even let that become an issue yeah but still a one possession game this one not fully over yet Start the drive with a run by Stewart. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It's already second and 12. The defense hoping to push him back more. Newton turns and hands to Stewart. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. So the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. And the Eagles will go with an extra DB here as they prepare for a stop on third. Thinking pass all the way. Out of the pistol, McCaffrey. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play.
Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for touchback. Carson Wentz and the Eagles make their way out to the field. I would imagine you want to win every game big, but if you're a quarterback in the NFL, this is the spot that you love. You've been dreaming of it since you were a kid, playing in the backyard or the front yard, wherever, where you went through those imaginary situations. Now it's real, though. What practice have you put in since the OTAs, the mini camps, preseason camp, sequence of plays, get the ball to the outside, get it out of bounds, save your timeouts, move the ball downfield to get your team in a position to win the game. And a field goal, of course, no good. They need a score. Back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Now Wentz. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off near the 42. And he'll return it to the 24-yard line. That was a really nice interception. I think it illustrates the differences between playing man and playing zone. When you're in man, all you're focused on is the receiver in front of you. But when you're in zone, you're allowed to read the quarterback's eyes and go to the ball. That's exactly what happened on that play. Here come the Panthers now, set to take over on offense. They have the lead, still a one-possession game, but the defense got to stop. They've got the football now, just salted away, right? Exactly. That's all the defense is counting on from their offense. They did their job in a big way. You know they're over on the sidelines now, starting to take their tape off, and, hey, we've done this thing. The offense has to put it away, and that means ball security. Absolutely. Stranger things have happened. And this one going to wrap up with Cam Newton going down to a knee. Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Panthers are winners here as we say so long from Charlotte.